Okay, so moving on. Uh, in the last bit, I showed you the most basic way to make a custom kit. You just change the sounds for the pads. And in the process of doing that, I changed the sample in the UltraBeat for the snare, and I imported a different factory voice into the UltraBeat for the click. And I told you that if you do either of those things, 99% of the time, the smart controls here will just work. But very occasionally, you might need to edit the pitch or the length control to accommodate the new sample or the new imported voice. And I said it's easy to edit these controls. Well, it is. We can easily edit these smart controls for a pad in place, meaning edit the smart controls when the voice is already loaded into Drum Machine Designer. But we don't want to get confused. First, we need to learn how to make a complete custom voice from scratch. And if we learn how to do that, then when we come to learn how to edit these smart controls in place, it'll be much more clear. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to make a complete custom drum machine designer voice patch that can live in the library alongside the factory ones, which we can load any time into any drum machine designer kit. All right. All righty. Let's go for it. So the first thing is all the drum machine designer voice patches, they all live in the library in their different folders, kicks, snares, hats, etc. They all live in the library. Exactly the same as basses or drum kits or guitars or synths or keyboards, etc. Now, if you don't understand logic, you're new to it. Everything in the library is a channel strip preset. Right, And any channel strip preset in the library that makes a sound that can be loaded onto an instrument track, it's a combination of the actual software instrument with a particular patch or a particular set of samples or an individual sample, plus the output channel for that software instrument with particular effects and EQ on, the combination of which makes up the particular bass or guitar or keyboard or synth or whatever that you load. Now, look, drum machine, drum machine designer, kit pieces. All our drum machine designer factory voice patches, they also live in the library. These are also channel strip presets. That's the protocol Apple have chosen to use for drum machine designer factory voice patches. So when you load one of these into drum machine designer, you're loading the UltraBeat voice with its sample and particular synthesis and you're loading the output channel for that ultrabeat voice with its effects and EQ. So these are just channel strip presets, just like a guitar or a bass or a synth. So they can be loaded onto an instrument track independently of Drum Machine Designer. I'll check it out. Make an instrument track. And on this track, I could load a, a, a synth or an orchestral or a, a, a bass or anything I want, but I'll go Drum Machine, Drum Machine Designer, kit pieces and I can load any of these factory voice patches onto this instrument track. I'll load up the snare one after party. Boom. And there it is, snare one after party on an instrument track by itself. Here's the track. Here's the channel for the track. Now this channel here, this is the actual ultrabeat channel that loads into the stack with snare one after party. But when you load the voice patch onto an instrument track like this by itself, Logic puts an ultra beat on the channel. There, look. It has to put an ultra beat on the channel because there has to be an ultra beat there to load the actual ultra beat voice into for, in this case, the snare one after party. Right. And also, now that we've got this voice patch on its own instrument track, we can open the smart controls for the track. And because these are now track-based smart controls, because the voice patch is on a track, we can edit them. Ah. Right? So here's all the components for Snare 1 After Party. This is the UltraBeat voice for Snare 1 After Party with a particular sample and synthesis. This is the output channel for the UltraBeat voice for Snare 1 After Party. And these are the smart controls for Snare 1 After Party. Right. Okay. Now, the ultrabeat voice for the patch is always put into the bottom slot of the ultrabeat. 
when you have a voice patch on its own track like this. And this bottom slot in the Ultra B is the C1 note slot. These slots work up from C1, C sharp 1, D1, D sharp 1, etc. So a transposer is put on the channel to transpose the correct MIDI note for the type of patch you've got on the track down by the required amount of semitones to trigger the ultra bit voice always in the bottom C1 slot. So this is a snare one snare on the track, which is normally triggered by the note D1. So the transposer here is transposing an incoming correct D1 note, the correct note for a snare one snare, down by two semitones from D1, down one, two semitones, to trigger the ultra beat voice for this snare patch in the bottom C1 slot of the ultra beat. Do you understand that? Whatever type of voice patch you put onto the track by itself, whatever is the actual MIDI note that will trigger that voice when it's loaded into Drum Machine Designer, the transposer transposes that correct MIDI note down by the required amount of semitones to trigger the ultra beat voice, which is always in the bottom C1 slot, when a voice patch is put onto its own track like this. All right? 